saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we tried to prevent him because he does not follow us. Jesus replied, Do not prevent him. There is no one who performs a mighty deed in my name who can at the same time speak ill of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. Anyone who gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ, Amen, I say to you, will surely not lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were put around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter the life maimed than with two hands to go into Gehenna, into the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life crippled than with two feet to be thrown into Gehenna. If your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into Gehenna. For there were the worms do not die, and the fire is not quenched. <coughs> the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And the angel 
Angel looked up and got an okay. He said, all right, fine. So he reached under his bed and grabbed the bag and presented himself at the pearly gates. Now, St. Peter is at the gate and welcoming the man and said, but you're going to have to put your luggage over here. <laughs> and the guy said, oh, no, 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 no. You don't understand. <laughs> I got, I got a special deal with God. And St. Peter said, Okay, wait just a minute, I'll be right back. And so he went off to talk to the front office. <laughs> and he came back shaking his head and said, Well, you're right, you've gotten this deal. So the one thing is, though, I have to take a look at what you've brought. And so the man with a great flourish, opened his bag, and there was all this gleaming gold in it. And he was just so happy. And St. Peter looked at it and said, Okay, well, uh, follow him, and he'll tell you where you're supposed to go. And so the man closed the bag, picked it up, and walked after the angel. And as he was going, he sort of looked back, and he saw St. Peter scratching his head, going, Pavement? Why would he bring pavement? <laughs> totally confused. The streets of heaven are paved with gold. <laughs> we very often put our trust in so many things that don't really matter. We need to make sure that our lives are comfortable. We need to make sure that we're dressed right. We need to make sure we have, and in these days it's a hard trick, the right job drive the right car, the smell, what, the way they tell us to smell on TV. We get all this advice from the TV. And many of us forget what is really important, which is the words of the Gospel. And that is, no matter what religion we follow, no matter who is our teacher, we need to do the will of God. And that's the important thing. No matter whether we're Christian, no matter whether we're Jewish, no matter whether we're Muslim, if we are following the way of God, which is the way of forgiveness, the way of truth, the way of love, the way of healing, we are preparing for the coming kingdom of God. No matter what we call ourselves, or no matter what we call God, if we truly do good, then as Jesus said, those who do good in my name cannot oppose me. And so rather than putting our hopes in things of the world, as we're told in our, our second reading today, where gold and silver tarnish, where garments fall apart with moths, the only things that really matter are not the things of this world, but the things of the world to come. The things that Jesus again and again and again showed us are important. That we care for one another. That we take care of the widow, the orphan, the poor. That when we hear of some tragedy, even on the other side of the world, for people that we will never meet, we must somehow bring them into our heart. And if possible, to do good for them, say, giving to charities to take care of them, or offering them our prayers, doing good works in their name, then we need to do that. We need to make ourselves not just solitary, me first, I want God to love me, Christians. We have to be Christians the way Jesus showed us to be, with his arms outstretched to embrace the entire world. Where he could say from the cross, I forgive you, to a thief. Where he could say from the cross to those who had put him there, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That is the kind of Christian we need to be. One who doesn't stop at the meanness of Christianity, but rather goes on to include every person we meet and every person we don't meet. So that our Christianity, our love of God, is universal. It's not just a single ticket to heaven. It is instead a ticket that embraces all of humanity, especially the ones that are hard to love, especially the ones that declare themselves our enemies, 
especially those whom we look at and we really don't want to have them in our neighborhood. In those people, we see the face of Christ. We see God's Spirit living and true, trying to work to bring us all together to overcome boundaries of nation and state and language and religion. All of those boundaries that are here in this world are for us to overcome by our love, by our prayer, by all the things that we do in order to make God's kingdom complete. Because it cannot be complete until it encloses all. We are here for each other, every one. And they are here for us, every one. We look at the world today and we see it wrapped with sectarian violence, wrapped with hatred for the other. Even if the other has lived next to them all of their lives, suddenly they're the people I want to kill. They're the people I want to get rid of. We, on the other hand, are taught by God that somehow, and particularly when it's a hard thing to do, to find a way to forgive and to heal and to love. Because as Jesus said, if we love only those who love us, what's the good in that? Even the pagans do as much. And if we only take care of those who take care of us, what's the good in that? Where's the blessing? The blessing comes when we do the hard work of loving. When we do the hard work of forgiving. When we do the hard work of living at the cross in a world that considers the cross an absurdity. That is our work as Christians. That is what Jesus calls us to do. So that when we see someone else doing Christ-like behavior and they don't belong in our church, that we support them. That we help them do the good that we see them doing. That we involve ourselves in the lives of others. So that perhaps someday all together we can say with Jesus, I have one foe and they have one shepherd. And that shepherd brings all his sheep home and loses none of those that were given to him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And now, my friends, let us...